Good evening. I'm Brian. This is Blast Beat ATX, aka Blast Beat Industries, your one stop shop for everything cool on eBay. All right. So that's what, as they say, brung us to the dance. That's not what I'm going to talk about tonight. Tonight, I talked to my partner at crime, Crucial Chris, back in Louisiana. And we figured it would, he's rejuvenated his YouTube page. He's putting all his music and, you know, consolidating everything together. So this is the return of Planet Austin. For those who don't know, and I assume that's most of you, uh, I had a podcast weirdo weekly column thing on a website called Radio Roach, which you should check out. That dude is a big supporter of underground music and independent bands and everything that's right in the world. He's one of the good guys. But this new one, or the new version, the new volume, is going to be done through Roughdale 1979. That is Chris's page. That's all his music. That's his eBay stuff. That's his writing. All that is there. This is going to be here and there. So there's two ways to find it. Plus, everyone has their phone in their pocket. You can find it anyway. So the format of Planet Austin is very much me just yakety yakking about life here in the capital city. And I got a big list of topics here that I want to talk about. I don't know how many of them I'm going to get through tonight, because if I sat here and did all of them in a row, this thing would be three hours, and y'all have better stuff to do with your time, so we'll, I'm looking at the clock. We'll see, see how it goes, see how much of this we get into, okay? Now, my buddy at work, James, from San Jose, all right, that's a cool dude, Okay. If you hadn't heard, like, half of California's moved to Austin, all right? And there's a reputation on both ends, you know, that from the Austin residents' point of view, okay? I'd say I'm guilty of this, too. I'm not pointing the finger at anybody, but it's... We have this assumption that these people come here from the West Coast for South by Southwest during March, when the weather's nice, and... Everyone's high and drunk because it's South by Southwest. So they get here. The weather's good. Oh, everyone's so friendly. This place is so bohemian. Let's move here. And then they move here, realize it's just another ghetto in Texas like all the rest of them. And it ain't what it's cracked up to be. It ain't what's on the news or on TV or whatever. There was a really interesting article of Business Insider last week or the week before about one of these guys that moved here from San Francisco. He moved to B Caves, all right? That's over near Westlake. That's kind of the the hoity-toity part of town. And that was too much for him. He definitely couldn't handle Riverside or Runberg or St. John's or one of those places, downtown, Ben White. He... In my eyes, that dude didn't even see the real Austin if the suburbs flipped him out. So he moved, I think they moved to Nevada or something. He just badmouthed the city. And the thing that really stuck in my craw was the thing about rude locals. How would you know about rude locals? You never met me, okay? <laughs> it's just you, two. you don't know the people I know. We'll show you fucking rude. <laughs> I guess I should point that out now. Most of my YouTube stuff, especially the stuff about collectibles, I try to keep all ages and let's be professional. This ain't Planet Professional. This is Planet Austin. So I'm going to let some fucking F-bombs fly tonight. So extreme language warning, all right? If you get bent out of shape about cuss words, I don't know if I can help you. So you got that. that's what the Austin people think about the Californians moving in. Now, the Californians moving here, I see where they're coming from. Because if they went to San Antonio or went to Houston, especially the ones from L.A., it's, we just moved to a different L.A. It's the same shit and the same problems, and it, I feel you on that. I'm originally from Houston, and I've lived in Austin for a million years, so it, uh, trust me, I understand where you're coming from, but largely because of my buddy James up at work, I have realized that it's it's not a geography thing. It's not an address thing. If you were an asshole in Austin, you were probably an asshole back in California. Because I know plenty of Californians that came here and just got with the program and made something of themselves. And 
didn't sit here and whine about, oh my God, this isn't like Palo Alto. Guess what? Nothing is. That's why it's Palo Alto. Go out there if you want to do that thing. And so what, what does this have to do with anything? Me and James were talking about the old punk bands we used to listen to. And we realized that it's pretty much the same list of bands with one big exception. And this is where the California, Texas thing is coming in. Like, we love Black Flag. We love the Dead Kennedys. Love Bad Brains. I love, I, minor Threat, Fugazi, that kind of stuff. It just love that we're doing our own thing. And when, when they say hardcore punk, Watch the NYC documentary. It's on a playlist here on the channel called Self Quarantine Theater. You can watch the whole movie. I just turn this off and go watch that now. That's better. But the dude uh, Ray Capo, who was in Youth of Today and then later in Shelter, he said something really smart about what's hardcore. You've heard that term, hardcore. You know, and it's an adjective. It's not a noun. What what, what what's hardcore about it? Is it hardcore punks? Hardcore metal? Is it whatever? I like what Ray Capo said. Hardcore is rock and roll boiled down to its essence. It is just immediate, no frills, in your face. And we realized that, yeah, we're both attracted to that music. Same feeling of right now, except for one big difference. He mentioned a band called JFA, Jody Foster's Army, the skate punk band. I think they're from Arizona or California, out west. And I've heard their stuff before, but I don't know any of the albums. I'm not super familiar with them. And he had the same reaction to me of, you know, I'm originally from Houston, so is DRI. And when I was growing up and in high school, man, we tore up North Houston skating the DRI. That was our band, you know? And he hadn't really heard of them. Just like I hadn't really heard JFA, not enough to have a good opinion on it. And that's when the light bulb went off of, oh, th th this is kind of the same band that, that Dirty Rotten Imbeciles and Jody Foster's Army are just the California and Texas version of the same thing. That, that skate punk, throw a rock through a window feeling uh, that it, it's, I don't know, I, I drew a conclusion that it's we're far more the same than we are different, if that makes sense. And I, I hope it does. It kind of makes sense to me. I'm, I'm thinking out loud here. So I, I just, I, I hadn't realized that before, and I definitely wouldn't realize it on that on my own if we didn't have that conversation. And I, I just, let's lighten up on the Austin LA thing. You know, it, it LA's in a bad place. Would you want to go out there and live right now? You know, it, it I also have a theory that we'll get into in a later episode. I've hinted at it in the old episodes on Radio Roach and on Roughdale of my theory about Austin. And basically, most of the people who move here are going to be gone within 12 months. They're not going to make it. They're not going to last. They're just here on an extended spring break. My man James is not one of those people. He's, he's here to go the distance. So, on that note... what. Should we talk about Austin Radio? Or, uh, we, we dove into the, the L.A. Houston thing. Well, let me finish off another thought that was on here. As a matter of fact, let me get my pen so I can keep track of what I'm talking about. But the, the L.A. and Houston. All right. I had a friend in the Army who, he was from New York. He was, Jesus Christ, where is he from? Uh, Washington Heights, I think. Somewhere in Manhattan. And like, in the city. And... He took a long weekend to Fort, or from Fort Hood to Houston and just like did the city, went to the clubs and went to the Galleria and all that kind of thing, and came back. And on Monday, that's the big conversation. What'd you do over the weekend? He's like, man, Houston has the most East Coast attitude of any place I've been in the South. And I think there's a lot of truth to that. New Orleans also has a very East Coast attitude, but attitude ain't everything. And I would not compare Houston to New York at all. New York goes up. Houston goes out. It, it, it is like a two and a half hour drive to cross Houston. It, 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 anywhere else in the country, you'd be in another state. But you, you hadn't even left Houston yet. You know, it, When you go north and south, it, Houston is basically from Huntsville to the ocean. It is like 85 straight miles of concrete Vietnam. It, it's a sight to behold. So is Los Angeles. 
Los Angeles and Houston have so much in common, I would compare them to two sisters, all right? You got two sisters. You got one sister that's Los Angeles. She's famous. She's been in the movies. She knows She knows Tom Cruise. You know, she, yeah, it's, you got the, the, the beautiful, desirable sister who's really bad with money, who just doesn't know how to run her business. The house is falling down around her, but she's got the right address that everyone likes, but she would love that financial stability. Then you got her sister, Houston. Houston's kind of frumpy. Houston don't dress nice. Houston is just, uh, there in the car. Here's a person, you know. Houston has a really good job in the oil industry, all right? Houston makes a ton of money. I guess here is the Houston-New York comparison. Houston is number two behind New York, which is number one, for worldwide headquarters of Fortune 500 companies. You wouldn't believe or maybe you would, the people who are there, the Seven Sisters Oil Companies. I'm sure we've all heard of Shell and Exxon and Chevron and Texaco and those people. Those are those skyscrapers in downtown Houston. Just like all the skyscrapers in downtown Austin are all owned by banks. To keep that in mind. Dallas, too. That's a lot of banks up there. It's oil in Houston. So, frumpy, nasty sister. And I make that comparison because Houston it has a reputation of just perpetually being under construction. Everywhere, you, the national bird of Houston is the crane. The highways are always torn up because they're doing something. It's just, it's never finished. There's an intersection where I grew up that's I-45 in 1960. They started working on that in, I think, 1974 or 75. Before I was born, they started working on it. They didn't finish that thing until 2004. I had to go through driver's ed, through what they called the wall of death, which is like it sounds. It's a wall that's about six inches away from the window of your car. It's just like something out of Star Wars. I learned how to drive in that stuff. So that that's where the frumpiness, you wouldn't believe how many people I've heard come to Houston. Oh, my God, it's so ugly. It's, we don't feel that way, you know. It's a natural environment for us, and Houston definitely wants to be the desirable sister. Is that that's its penis envy with Austin too? Austin and Houston want to be each other. Austin wants to be the financial center and the Fortune 500 place and the the, the technology hub and that kind of stuff that Houston has, and Houston desperately wants to be the cool city. They want to have all the movies and music and celebrities and stuff, and no one goes there. And if they do, they're probably up to no good and kicking it in some hotel, <laughs> like, you know, Kirby at 610 doing an eight ball or something. I'm not joking. I'm, you know, I'm not joking. I, look at a guy named Johnny Bender. We'll get into that later on, like a month from now. It's a, ooh. <laughs> but I think that's why those two cities could be compared as two sisters is that they they've got so much in common except for the one big difference that makes them distinguishable from each other so i don't blame them for coming here i i don't you know it, it it's basically the same place run a little bit better with a slightly less evil governor and i'm not getting into politics i like a lot of the stuff greg abbott's done but I think we'd all agree that Gruesome Newsome needs to be thrown in Gitmo for what he's done in that state. It is a crime. It, it, I've been out to California a lot in my life. It, it, I, I hate seeing it happen. I really hate seeing it happen here in Austin, but that's due to our local city heroes who definitely did not cheat during the election. So anyway, that's enough of the L.A.-Houston thing. Let's get into some Austin radio. As you, if you watched the last podcast, you know that I have a background in radio. Uh, that Of all the broadcast mediums, that's the one I focused on. You know, it, it, I really have a passion for it. it. It is what leads to this. It's why I'm so comfortable on the mic is because I have that radio experience. And being on camera, and I keep wearing the same Sam Houston jacket in all these videos. I don't give a flying fuck about any of that. Quick aside before I get into Austin radio. I've said this before, I'm going to keep saying it again. You, me, him, her, all them people out there, if you're watching this, man, you're, you're part of the underground. You're one of the outsiders. You're not a mainstream fucking lame-o. 
you're not some Alex Jones info warrior shithead. You're not part of the woke crowd. You are just doing your own thing, following your own muse, right? And, and we shouldn't take that for granted. You know, we really, really should not. But more importantly, I hate. This is a taste thing. I'm not saying it's right or wrong or they're bad or any of that. But my personal taste, I hate the professional looking shit. I just despise the people. They've got fancy graphics and they got follow me on Twitter and Instagram up at the top. You ain't never going to see that bullshit on this show. Ever. Ever, ever, ever. A lot of that's my influences when I was younger. Bill Hicks, Howard Stern, Jerry Seinfeld. It's them and a microphone. You like the audio? I'm using the microphone today. Uh, that's where I'm coming from. And I really don't dig it when people I respect for other areas of life have their podcast looking like Sports Center or Entertainment Tonight or some garbage like that. Again, with all the flashy Hollywood shit. Why on earth would you want to be like them when they've never done jack shit for you? Were they there when you were sick? Did they help you move? Tom Hanks ever give you any money? Fuck them. Why on earth would you want to be like them? And definitely why would you want to try to be one of them? You know, I, I got more stories about that. We're not getting into that tonight. Let's get into some Austin radio. There has been some good news on that front. We got a station here. Some of you outside of the city might have heard of it. All of you in the city definitely have. KLBJ, 93.7 KLBJ, not 590. 590 KLBJ at AM is the talk radio station with Rush Limbaugh and Coast to Coast AM and all that. And I listen to them too, but I'm talking about the music station. KLBJ, for the longest time, was the rock of Austin. Then they were Austin's classic rock, and that's when I kind of tuned out because how much Pink Floyd Ted Nugent can you take in one life? And I love Pink Floyd, but oh my God. All that I swear, with all they would probably play every song on Dark Side of the Moon every day. It, it was seriously like that. It was just the same shit over and over and over. And then New Year's happened, and I noticed this last month because you know, we had an incident at work where people were listening to some stuff that had some words in it, and other people got offended. So they came with the the rules of either put your headphones in and listen whatever you want, or listen to the radio. Go FCC rules. I don't like having the stuff in my ears, especially when I'm paying attention to other things. So, you know, fuck it, I'll just listen to the radio, right? And then New Year's happened. And now, they're, they're, what are they? They're not the Rock of Austin. They Austin's Rock Headquarters or something like that. The point is, they changed their set list. They big time changed their set list. They probably reduced that, the amount of classic rock and broad definition, let's call classic rock, before 1990, all right, that it's probably been reduced about 60%. Because I flipped out one day. They played Five Finger Death Punch at 11 in the morning. That's new. That station, especially that station does not play that. They're too busy playing Van Halen for the billionth time. And then they played Three Days Grace. And I thought to myself... If I gotten so old that Five Finger Death Punch and Three Days Grace are now considered classic rock, but then they start playing other stuff. Stuff I like. Stuff like Korn. Stuff like the Deftones. Stuff like System of a Down. It's like, wait a minute, what's going on here? They have blown up their playlist and their format. I think they're personally trying to be more like C101 and Corpus and um, 99 Kiss in San Antonio. That, that those are two really awesome stations that play a lot of cool new stuff. They realize Metallica's put out albums since the Black Album, and they're good. You know, it, Death Magnetic and World uh, Hardwired to Self Destruct are awesome, and so now they've incorporated that into there. Oh yeah, they've played a ton of Metallica, which is it would not break my heart if they only played Metallica and Corn. Those are like my two favorite bands. It's, I can live with this, and so that it's a. Yeah, a really positive move in the right direction. And I think that it's, it's a combination of they were definitely having a ratings decay, playing the same crap over and over. And they were having, you know, 
how often do you want to hear every day you come into work and say, hey, that other station in the other town just kicking your ass up and down the street. You, no prayer. You suck. And it's like, well, let's stop sucking. And that is probably a really good plan on their part. But, but, except for one thing, uh, Anyone ever heard of Dale Dudley? They got one of these jackass zoo crew. It used to be the morning show, and now it's the afternoon show during drive time. It's like the last glimpse of the old station. And I assume it's because these guys are still under contract. They can't toss them yet. But <laughs> That's coming, because you're terrible. It, it, it's Dale and Bob with Matt. I know, what a name for a fucking show. Losers. It, it, Dale Dudley is Austin's very own dollar store version of Howard Stern. It is a pathetic wannabe. With it, it, When I hear his voice, I want to dive across the room and change the station. And barring that, I think to myself, hey, hey, Dale, Dale, if you're out there listening to this, if I give you some money, would you go buy a personality? Hmm, please? This is it's too much. And I... I <sighs> He's horrible. They got a guy, Bob Fonseca. I couldn't pick him out of a lineup of one. I mean, you talk about an interchangeable, taking up space, waste of life. There you go. Has he ever said anything memorable ever? I don't think so. And then there's Matt Bearden, who's a comedian. Comedian. And what I mean by comedian is this dude ain't funny. That's why he's on this jackass show with these losers. But he lives that comedian life where he goes to open mic night every night and tries out new jokes and he has all the lingo of I'm not an open micer I'm a feature fucking whatever and hey I, I'm doing working on my crowd work this week he's, he's about that lifestyle and that's fine somebody's got to do it it ain't for me there's gonna be a future episode about my brief comedy career and and why I pulled the plug on it was actually going somewhere and it's the shit I'm saying right now of just that lifestyle and the way those people conduct themselves no thank you I found a home in the music world and in the comic book world and the club I got other shit going on I don't need that grief and apparently they do because they're still doing this if they would throw those guys into the sun and get rid of that station and just keep playing the awesome music, and I know a lot of this is an age thing that we got another really good rock state, really good rock station here, 101X, who, hey, in the 90s, 2000s, they were all over. They played a ton of cool stuff. And then, I don't know, I'd say 2009, 2010, whenever that, um, those assholes with the song, <laughs> I know that the something brothers, not the burden brothers, they're good. The the other, not the Avid brothers. Yeah, that kind of stuff. The do a do a that stupid hipster shit. They they went all in on that stuff. I hate that music. I that's why I can't think of the band names. But even to this day, one hundred and one X plays a lot of that. But their new stuff, they're getting into like the the younger newer bands where the new stuff on uh, KLBJ is just more, more shit from my generation, more shit from the 90s, less from the 70s. And, I, hey, you made a, win, a believer out of me. Made a winner out of yourself. Made a believer out of me. And dude, keep playing the Deftones. <laughs> There's just worse ways to spend your time. You know, <laughs> keep just... Keep cranking that Rage Against the Machine. I love that stuff. It was a way step in the right direction. Just get rid of the zoo crew. Talk about the throwback to the 80s. My Lord. And seriously, he is a dollar store version of Howard Stern to the point of, like, mimicking his voice. It's pathetic. That's enough of the negativity. I just, I, I just I don't dig that show at all. I don't dig that sh Now, a show I do dig. Okay, so... Now, you know, one more point about Dale Dudley. All right, it, it's here on my list. And I'm just using him as an example for this kind of person. They're the worst type of sellout because they tried to sell out and the powers that be kicked them back. <laughs> no, 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 we're good. Because he, he'll go on and on about, oh, I could have worked in Atlanta. I could have worked in all these major markets. Yeah, but you didn't. So shut the fuck up. Forever. About everything. You know, it... Go be a real estate agent or something. Go be a dad. This ain't for you. 
not here, not in the future, you know. <sighs> but a show I do like that used to be on 101X and is now on KLBJ. And all you people who don't live in Austin and don't know what the hell I'm talking about, there's this thing called the internet, okay? Do a search for this. Get on your search engine of choice and search for this. No control radio. No control radio. No control radio. No control is Austin's longest serving. That's not the right word. Longest tenured. The longest metal show in Austin's history. It's been going, I think, since 98 or something, 2000. It's been about 20 years. They've been on the air bringing heat. Bring it heat, all right? Play it good shit. Play it emperor. Play it the red cord. Play it, you know, obituary. Play, play it code orange. Play it the good shit in the middle of the night. I think it's, it's either midnight to two or 10 to midnight, something like that. Go there around midnight. You'll, 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 you'll get the heaviness, the heaviness you deserve, the heaviness you work so hard for, all right? It, the, I, no control rate, no control radio. No control radio. They have a 24-hour streaming website. That's the stuff they play on the show. If it gets played on the show, it gets added to the you know the playlist on the website, and you just have that going. Whatever you're doing at the gym, at the car wash, whatever you know, talking to your lawyer about your criminal defense, it happens. So you know, you might as well be listening to something good. You mean, listen to Taylor Swift while you're trying to avoid life in prison? Hell no. You know, you got to listen to Cannibal Corpse for that. Deicide, that kind of stuff. So I just. He's found a home on that station. The L.A. Roy Rock Countdown's pretty good. Uh, I don't know if it's still on the air. 101X had a really good punk show on Sunday nights called Complete Control with the guy Joe Sib that used to be in 22 Jacks and uh, there's a couple other bands. And they played a lot of the, the, the West Coast, like, fat epitaph sound, a lot of that stuff. And that's another really good show. So it, I don't want to hear this shit about there's nothing to listen to. There's a ton to listen to. Get on the internet. Turn your radio on. You know, it, it, it's it's there. If you don't support it like anything else, it's going to go away. So there, there's your Austin radio update. We got that. We did. <sighs> yeah, we kind of talked about Austin versus Houston already. We'll check that one off. Uh, let's do... We're going to save this one for another week. Let's talk about bands. Let's talk about the evolution of a band finding its sound, losing its sound, getting its sound back. If you're not manufactured garbage, you know, it, it packaged Hollywood shit, then it, it's it's alive. The music's alive. And what do I mean by that? I mean, a band called Life of Agony, singer Mina Caputo, formerly Keith Caputo, it... it she does the harmonies in the songs different every night. You you know the lyrics to these songs. You got to memorize. Well, maybe not you, but I certainly do. And it's impossible to sing along to her because she's changing up the harmonies because the music's alive. When they play it, it's changing as they play it. There's a good thing on YouTube about Corn in 2013 when Head came back to the band. They were doing uh, rehearsals for the world tour. That was one of those ones. They were going to zigzag all over the planet for 15 straight months and. Because Head came back, and this is after the whole Carolina Rebellion thing, they dug out a lot of the old stuff. A lot of stuff off the first two albums they hadn't played in forever. And then the hits off the later ones, like uh, Somebody, Someone, and Falling Away From Me. And uh, there was another song. Um, uh, the one on the Tomb Raider soundtrack, not Got the Time? But it's on that, that, that album, the Take a Look in the Mirror album, that... They they had changed these songs when he was gone, and they they had eight different guitar players in eight years. They couldn't replace Head. He's a founding member of the band, a very important part of it. And so he comes back. They're rehearsing the old stuff, playing it how they recorded it. And Fieldy made the comments, "Man, these songs were cool the first time around, and we kept screwing with them. We chopped them up and ruined them. So it, it, let's let's go back and fix it. So that's what I'm talking about: the evolution of a band, right?" I got two examples here that both bands, when I first heard them, I did not dig them at all. And then, I don't know, I blinked and they got good. 
They got genuinely really good. First one is the Kings of Leon. When they started, they were, you know, teenage superstars. I think they're from Tennessee or Kentucky, so somewhere in that area. And I do know their dad was a big part of their machine. He was like their, their manager and their agent and the guy talking to the label and all. He played too big of a role in the band. And you could tell that it, it was those first couple of Kings of Leon's albums. I don't like them. It sounds like they were put together by committee. It, it off putting for me, a lot of talent, a lot of skill, but just, I, I didn't dig it at all. And then that song came out, Yo, the sex is on fire. That song, whoa, that one knocked me up against the wall. Uh, I, I didn't think it was, I thought it was a new band. I I, I, I think we heard that at work, and, and I took the guy, and I was like, who is this? It's Kings of Leon. No oh, bullshit. No, who is it really? He's like, no, it's their new album. It's like, Get the hell out of here. That, that, wow, that's their new one? And... So I, I don't know exactly know what caused the change, but I know that their newer stuff just smokes their older stuff. And there was a second band I noticed this with, the Arctic Monkeys. And I saw a YouTube video that did explain this. And the Arctic Monkeys started, they were riding that wave of the the bands from the, the early 2000s. You had the Strokes and the Vines and the Hives and the this and the that and the other. They were kind of riding that thing. And so it was really jangly, played up on the twelfth fret on you know the B and E strings, real treble war kind of music. Man, I like bass. I I, I like double bass drumming. I like drop D tuning. I like low sounds. I'm not into that. No, no, no. And that's what their first early stuff sounded like. And then I believe it was their third record. Though this is where I'm going with this. Do you want to know that song? You've heard that song, even if you heard it in a grocery store or something. So you may not have sat down and intentionally paid attention to it, but you have heard this song. And that album is so different from their early stuff. And what this video explained is, is they went out to uh, Palm Desert, California. That doesn't ring a bell, because that's the home of Caius and Queens of the Stone Age and Josh Homey, the one of the greatest living guitar players. They went out to his studio and he produced the album with him. And kind of, I don't know, song doctored him a little bit, but the big advice he gave him is slow down. Not that they were like a speed metal band or something. There's nothing metal about these guys. They're the, the again, the, the bands from then. It's like, man, lose this shit. Just go slower. It's going to open up more stuff for you. Open it up musically. Not, oh, we're going to open for the Beatles or something. You know what? <laughs> no, no, not that. I just... You're going to start playing stuff you didn't think you were capable of playing. And that is another one. I didn't like the early stuff, and I heard Do You Want to Know, and it, this is a different band. Nope, it's the same guys. What happened? Josh Homey happened. Okay, all of a sudden, I'm a big fan of this. So it, the moral of the story is, you, you know, you, you might not like something one day, whether it's a book, a movie, a relative, or whatever. Man, things don't stay the same. Some things get worse. A lot of stuff gets worse. Some shit gets better. So, hey, don't quit before the miracle happens. I'm looking at my notes. Hey, you know what? I think that's a good place to end this one for this week. I got a couple other things. We're going to see that it starts getting weird again. Because the rest of this was real normal before that. But that's the takeaway for this week. For this week's Planet Austin with Brian on Roughdale and Blast Beat Industries, man, don't quit before the miracle happens. You know, I, I believe in all of you. I, I, I'm getting enough response off this stuff where y'all believe in me. I, I'm still going to do the instructional things and you know, talk about the market. And Man, I've really found a home with this eBay thing. Hey, I'm going to be doing that the rest of the way, but there's other stuff to talk about too. And y'all have made it clear. You, you like the more personal side of this. And I don't mean personal. I mean, hey, we're, what, 34 minutes into this? Go back and look for yourself. I'm not sitting here crying and whining, but oh my God, but like... No, I mean personal is in sharing my experience, sharing my knowledge, sharing my stories, sharing other people's stories that I heard that y'all really like that. So we're going to be having more of it. 
man, the, the miracle happened to me. It's going to happen to you. Don't quit before the miracle happens. All right. So I'm Brian, Blast Beat Industries. You have a good week. Be cool.